Hello. Hey guys. Hello. Welcome. So. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, who who is who here? I'm Greg. I'm the art director. Okay. And I'm Garth. I'm the uh, lead producer. All right. Well, welcome, Greg and Garth. More specifically, uh, art director and lead producer of both XCOM Enemy Unknown and XCOM 2, which is what we will be primarily talking about today. Yep. That's right. We're on both titles, yep. Greg. It's been a long time. I know. It's like a marriage. <laughs> I know. <laughs> how, how long have you guys been making games together? Oh, since Enemy Unknown. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a few years. But yeah, like we've been, Garth and I have been working uh, together now for, for uh, uh, I don't know, seven, eight years, something like that. So it's been a, it's been a while, and I think that's part of the part of the cool part of our team is that we've got such a, uh, a history and the communication is the way it is that, um, you know, we can, we talk more honestly and frankly than I think uh, a lot of teams that don't have that longevity can do. So yeah, it's kind of a cool, it's kind of a, a good relationship the way it works. Well, so, that's that's great. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm I'm curious about something. You started with Enemy Unknown, and mm -hmm. uh, you know at the time turn based, other than like like combat, like the XCOM style combat was kind of dead. Uh, at the time, yeah. was there pressure on you guys to to turn it real time? I, there were. It's funny. I, I think there were murmurs, but they were always sort of in jest and and more joking. I mean the the the, the team creatively and and jake who is our lead designer on enemy unknown um design wise he was the biggest fan of the original XCOM series in the early 90s and to our publisher's credit um you know like you said i think the genre was, was pretty non-existent um when when we were in development with enemy unknown and and they sort of said what do you guys want to do with the title and we said these are the pillars of the core series that we want to uphold and they let us do it um, so there, no, there, there was never like a real conversation about do we go turn this into uh, you know an action-oriented game right now because that's not what XCOM's about. We, we defined what the pillars were and we stuck by them. Well, in the, in the turn base, you know, like that never wavered uh, internally, and 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 that was one of the things that that really we were able to take advantage of. I mean, we dropped the camera down all the time. If this was an action game, uh, you just couldn't do that, and so if it would be, it would end up. You'd have to have the camera where it is to play the game, and so it would be more of an RTS. Um, the turn-based nature allows us to drop the camera and get close to soldiers and mm -hmm. and see the action and 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 actually, you know, make a turn-based game that is actually entertaining to watch. And that, that's actually a great point. I mean, we, we talk about the design and the mechanics of the game, but the the most fun part of sort of the the, the concept coming together for me and actually what made me come to Praxis was seeing this movie that Greg and his team made, which was sort of a pre-gameplay visualization of what Praxis would do if we could bring a turn-based genre game back to, to the fold. And um, I think the visualization of everything sort of helped sell it because it, it kind of made it look like an action game, but you still had the timelessness of, of, of these mechanics that, that, that were, that were turn-based. And the funniest part about that was that actually, you know, when you look at the camera mechanics, we actually got pretty close to what the original thought was for it. Now we had time, we had we had time units. Yeah, now that went away because that actually wasn't fun. Um, that didn't translate great to a to a current game. Um, but but the turn based nature stuck uh, stuck. So and that was the very first thing we made. So that was kind of the bible for the game for uh, you know until I made the second movie with the mutons and the. It was, it was the perfect tool to galvanize the team uh, as well. Um, <laughs> So it's it's pretty cool to see. Is it mutons or mutons? Uh, I caught out of this. I it? this. It's, it's mutons, but I, I I've been saying a word so long. I, I started adding my Baltimore ease to it, <laughs> so it turned into mutons. But no, it's, it's, it's mutons is how I've always uh, known it to be. Although that's not what I'm. That's not what I I, I tend to, to say lately because I get lazy. <laughs> um, a little more effort to say mutons than muton. So. Okay. Uh, no, it's, it's it's it should be muton is, is what I think. Uh, I would assume that's what what Julian Gallup would tell us. I, I've said uh, muton occasionally myself, so I'm guilty okay. of that. Okay. It's okay. I don't I don't judge. Potato potato, uh, is what we'll say. Basically, our chat called me out on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're right to do so. Blame me. Blame me. <laughs> okay. So we you you guys coming from the success of XCOM into mm -hmm. XCOM two. 
what fr from a design perspective, from a gameplay perspective, what were your goals? The, I mean, to sum it all up, it was to make the game more unpredictable, to make it more replayable. We, we sort of had a, just an internal mantra on the team uh, of play forever, um, which obviously it, it can be a little uh, hyperbolic, but it really helped drive us with all of the micro decisions that design was making um, on the strategy layer to even on the tactical side with some of the facilities that you see in the Avenger and the procedural maps, mm -hmm. which was a key feature that was the, it was the first thing we prototyped in pre-production. Yep. It was all about how can we over deliver and make this this game uh, more replayable. Um, you, if you beat it or if you lose, you want to go back in because you will not see the same thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> the the maps help a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, a absolutely. I mean, Greg can talk a lot about that because that was yeah. a, a whole new pipeline. <laughs> I think I think Jake, when we first brought it up, I think when he said that we wanted to do procedural, he's like, you know, like we're we're thought we get to get. When we finished the game, four of us could get in a room. We're like, okay, well, what do we want to do? Like, how do we want to take this forward? And Jake was like, I want procedural maps. And I was like, yes. I think everybody thought I was going to be like, no, because like, <laughs> our, our level's really handcrafted, right? And uh, and there's the fear that, like, you know, when you do that, you're going to lose the, the that that uh, personal touch. Um, and I, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned greatly about that when we first got into it, but I was... I was right there saying, yeah, we, I want to do that because we needed a way to provide more content and making handcrafted maps just wasn't wasn't going to be feasible mm -hmm. to, to provide the depth that we wanted to provide. I mean, we just wanted to make more. And there is a lot of value. And I mean, going back to us being part of the same team across projects and in the industry, that that's somewhat of a rare thing. I know, rare. I know Bethesda's talked about this a lot as well with their Fallout series, but um, we learned a lot as a team, yep. as a leadership team, as a lot of other developers that, that were sub-leads or part of Enemy Unknown. Um, like Greg said, we tried some of this procedural stuff before the game. Uh, not only was it not in the oven to bake, it was, we were still finding the ingredients. And when you <laughs> were trying to lock too much all on at once in, in Enemy Unknown pre-production. But going through that, going through that learning lesson allowed us to, to do it right, I think, yep. in XCOM 2. So, um, the, and the team did such a great job. It, it's it's pretty hard to tell that they're procedural. They still they still have um, context behind them and, and you have the beauty of the hand-placed elements, but you won't see the same layout twice. No, and I think that, like it's extra important because, you know, thematically the the, the game has this guerrilla operations uh, feel to it. And so not knowing, yeah, I know Rich is uh, Rich has close to a thousand hours into the first XCOM. I have just like I'm like I'm like nine hundred and ninety five hundred hours into the game. And oh he, man! Yeah. He always says like, the, in 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 some maps he just knows where the aliens are going to be. Yeah, I, I know I know where to take cover. I I have a pretty good idea when I'm going to run into a pod. So pr that procedural generation helps add to the tension of each mission, and I think that's a that was a good call. Yeah, no, that that's good. Nine ninety five. Uh, I, I'm impressed. That's impressive. It I, might be nine ninety seven by now. You should work a little bit harder to get to four digits. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you're almost there. Well, you know, I'd be there by now, but I currently have one hundred ninety nine hours in XCOM two, oh in, in under a month. So I love your game, by the way. <laughs> that, that's all, that's that's really cool to hear. Thank you for, for playing. So, I'm, I'm kind of insulted. You only have almost two hundred hours. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Like he also has we a job. We have been out for like a thousand hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like I said, I'm I'm 200 hours in, just about, mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not feeling the the familiarity that I I did with the uh, original pre-made maps. Mm -hmm. Oh good. Yeah. The first time we did that, the first time procedural worked, right? Like I'd made all the buildings; they were all brick. And and the first time we got the system working, where like because everything's kind of like a, if you imagine like a road network. Um, where all it is is just cement, right? And then inside of these little pockets on the road network, buildings pop in, and then on top of the roads, stuff pops in. We didn't even have stuff on the roads, right? And mm -hmm. the buildings were popping in there, all these red brick buildings, um, because it was just me. Uh, and uh, and so um, they looked terrible. And so uh, <laughs> I, I remember I was sitting in my, my, in my house and like, I, I had made the level, I had made the plot, and then I, I dropped all the buildings in and I started. I had no idea where I was. And I'm like, I I made this and I don't know where I am in the level. <laughs> and, then, and then I restarted it and I was like, 
okay, I completely have no idea where I am now. Like, and that was the moment where I was like, this is going to work. Like, I, I, <laughs> from the art side, I was like, this is going to work. Go, going on to some of the other new things that, that were added in XCOM 2, uh, I know something that's a bit controversial is the, the timers. Okay. Yeah. Something that, you know, Rich, as a, as a veteran, didn't like at first, but has grown to love. Um, My man! <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, something... You and I, are Rich. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm... they're actually really nice. <laughs> what did the What did the idea to put timers in? Like, how did that all come about? Well, um, you know, th there was a, a few of the design pillars: procedural maps. How can we make the game more more replayable? Because you mentioned the gorilla theme, we really latched onto that, and we wanted mechanically first and foremost to say you're not just going into maps and uh, sweeping the map with with killing all aliens, which was the bulk of missions in Enemy Unknown. Enemy Within had a little more variety, um, and, and Enemy Unknown had had some uh, missions here and there, like bomb disposal. But we, we wanted to sort of flip flip the flip the, 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 the switch on that and make um, every map you go into the norm to be that you have an objective that, that, that you can't expect or anticipate, and it'll add a little wrinkle to gameplay. We love wiping aliens. You usually have to wipe out all the aliens, but because you're this guerrilla force, you also have to do this thing to push the resistance forward. Um, and and timers made sense. It, it made a lot of sense to 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 um, uh, tie into the narrative, but then also force you to relearn how to play. Which I think on the surface um, is is can be a little disturbing when you, especially someone that's played Enemy Unknown so much, and you have these go-to strategies and and these go-to tactics, but um, if you have to the overwatch creep this this baseline system that, that you put so many hours into and and learn to play it and master it in a new way it to me it, it elevates the experience even more um but we have mods if you don't like the timer so you can take them out <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i i didn't like them at first but once once i just got used to it i started appreciating how it it shook me out of my old strategies where <laughs> I, I always, before, I just took my time, I always find the good cover, creep up slowly, no need to rush. And now suddenly I got, I got something kicking me in the butts and you gotta, you gotta get moving. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta take more chances. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind right. of like that. And I am uh, consistently amazed at how often I just barely finish the objective in the nick of time. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm, I'm, how the hell I'm, did you balance that? The, our our level designers and 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 our and our game designers did a phenomenal job with that. A lot of play testing and feedback as well um, um, with iteration. I mean, we had we we had uh, there was a period in development where the timers were just way too long. And and you're right. I mean, it, it's it's a knife's edge. You have to get them just right, or else they feel meaningless. Yeah. If, if you finish every mission with three plus turns remaining, it's sort of like okay, I I didn't have to worry about that. And obviously, if it's impossible to get to, then 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 they feel too punitive, and and, and you feel like the game is is uh, purposefully um, uh, mistreating you. Um, and they did a great job, I think, of finding finding that sweet spot. It's not perfect, but I, I've had the same experience you did with with all the iteration we've gone through, where I generally will will overcome the objective within one or two turns remaining, and it always feels it adds this drama at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of of mods, I, I want to say the top mod for XCOM 2 is the removal of those timers. And, and, you know, obviously you need to stay open to the community, but, I mean, that's that's like redressing your baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how does, as, as game designers, like, you know, mods that, that change the alien design, mods that change gameplay elements, how, how do you deal with accepting the community involvement and, and having them shake your baby? We love it. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. No, that, that, so that was the whole purpose of, of mods. We, you know, we felt on Enemy Unknown that that was one pillar that we sort of swung and, and whiffed. And um, it's such it's such a cool design, uh, XCOM, um, that that is this unique game with the synergy between strategy and tactical and and this sort of open ended systems that that are that are highly systemic. That we said we want players in the community to be able to alter it how, how they see fit. And, and we think that, that that's the future for, for, for um, a lot of things in, in the industry. And if people want to want to change that, we're, we're, we're ecstatic that they love the game enough that they want to take the time and try to modify it and play it in new ways. And that all that plays into play forever. Um, I, at least, you know, on, on, on the design side, I know Greg's been super open to the, yeah. that about too with the, 
you know, mutons are getting chained. Mutons, mutons. are getting chained. <laughs> <laughs> mutons are now half foul. I, I mean, we, I, I think people ask me, like, what are you the most excited for? And I'm like, yeah, that's coming. Like, yeah, yeah. The cow print. Yes. We need a mood. We need a cow, a cow print. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to personally make sure that happens. Does it uh, shoot utter milk at you? Nervous. That will happen. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Calprin, how did I not do that? I'm telling you, man. Uh, we armor Calprin. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the, I'm, I, if you ask, like, you know, like, what are you ex excited to see? Or what do you, I, I, I want to see it all. Like, I actually go home and I look at Steam to see how many mods are, are in the game and, you know, like it, the first week or weekend, we had like 200 plus mods. I think we're over a thousand. Now. And yeah, like I mean, it's 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 mind boggling how much people are doing. But it, but at the same time, it's 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 the opposite of kind of I think where you're going with it. Like I we like we're excited to see what people love in the game, not not kind of like oh don't mess it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because we've already messed it up hundreds of times, right? But but no, I mean we want to we want to see you know, where people's interests are and what they want to do and, and what they want to make. And I think it, it's most players, it, I think it takes a little while to come to understand you came to where it was like, I need to throw out my old strategies and and play this a little bit differently. Even though the mechanics make you feel like it's the same thing, it really is a different game. And so, uh, you know, if you want to take the timers out, great. But like, it, it's good that, you know, to also approach it the way you did or come to that realization. It's, it's very big of you to be open to people uh, messing with your toys. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, again, like Gar said, if they're messing with it, they, they must love it, right? Like if, if yeah. and, and that's that's the biggest reward is people people going in and, and, and they want to make it their own. And, and that's, you know, that, that that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and where we are an interactive industry, that's sort of the differentiator with, with video games as opposed to movies or books or, mm -hmm. or things like that. And, and to partner with the community and see them sort of modify that key differentiator that we have and, and make it interactive in ways that they want is is, is really exciting. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it would be easy to sort of turn our nose up in the air and just say, <laughs> don't change it. The game is perfect, but um, we're, we're very open. We're gamers ourselves. We love we, we love seeing all, all different ideas and um, people playing with it in all types of new ways. I should probably check and see if there's a mod for a cow print. You should. <laughs> there, there might already be. There might already be a, a, a cow print in a mod. <laughs> But, by the, the way, mutant, um, coming in three weeks to <laughs> XCOM 2 Steam Workshop. <laughs> and anybody Bye. watching this, if you've modded out the timer, un unmod it, give it a day, and see <laughs> how you feel about it. <laughs> give Chris, it a chance. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I will say, so we're, we're, we're praising mods right now, and we truly love them, but Greg is right, you're absolutely right. Give it a chance. I mean, mods can sometimes be a crutch where people will be like, I don't even like this thing on paper, how it sounds, or, or after two <laughs> missions, I don't want to give it a chance. Mm -hmm. um, give it a chance. You know, we're, we're saying we love mods, but we also would like you to try the game we made a little bit <laughs> um, before you completely disrupt it. And then and then you can mod it how you want. But And, and I'm only saying that because I played so much myself, and, and I truly do believe in, in, in the timers. I think they're easy to dismiss when you hear about them on paper, but like you said, in your experience, um, they, they sort of fit in, into the theme of XCOM 2 as the package that, that Firaxis designed. Yeah. Well, speaking, you know, speaking of, uh, of art direction, art design, um, alien design, the coming from Enemy Unknown to XCOM 2, you know, Enemy Unknown is, is, is kind of classic big head aliens. And here mm. we have uh, kind of an evolution of that. Would you like to discuss uh, or talk about, you know, some of your inspirations in, in moving forward with the alien design? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, how much time do we have? <laughs> as much as you want. Um, no, uh, the, so the, the, the yeah, the, everything kind of is evolved. Uh, uh, you know, we w w one of the things that is a that makes XCOM XCOM. It's not like high sci-fi. It's grounded sci-fi. It's it's uh it's 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 kind of sci-fi lore. Um, you know, and so you know you have to have a sectoid, right? Oh, uh, definitely. You have to have a disc for UFO. Um, and those are kind of like the places where where I start. Um, Sectoid is always the first character I, I concept, and usually the last one that I model. It's the only one I model twice. Um, I model it first and then model again. But the we wanted to to uh, evolve several of the aliens and make them more human, uh, going with the storyline. And so, uh, and we wanted the Sectoid to be a little more uh, formidable uh, in in its physique. 
So we made him seven feet tall, and uh, you know, he gets to be a tough one because he's so he's so he because he's so simple. He doesn't have armor or anything. Uh, but you've got to you really got to push that one. So he actually is more difficult to concept than you would imagine. Plus, everybody knows what a little gray looks like to them. Um, he didn't. He, he was a little. This is true. He was a little gray, and we spliced him with, with human, right? Yep. And, and he's seven feet tall. Who was tall. the human? Jorge Mirasan? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something like that. The whole basketball team. I okay. don't know. Will, right. Will Chamberlain. Yeah, <laughs> he's got that Will Chamberlain well, uh, DNA. Absolutely. He can mind yeah, control and dunk. Can, we want to make him taller than <laughs> taller than the human. You know, we a lot of, we tried to do a little bit of a David versus Goliath kind of feel. Um, you know, where you get a shot cam and, and they're they're looking down on you, you're looking up at them. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, the the muton. You know, we wanted to stick to the purple skin and the green armor, but we wanted to actually kind of go back and show his physique a little bit because again, he's playing with human, um, but also go back to the very original XCOM game and and. Uh, make his uh, armor be more form fitting. Uh, the faceless is one that we we looked a lot at, like uh, the the creature from Black Lagoon and Swamp Thing and oh, yeah. Pan's Labyrinth, the panel man, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we took you know major major uh, inspiration from those uh, very common uh, 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 pop culture things that people understand, and we we try to do that everywhere. Like we want. To find little ways to connect people to to what's in the game, the the Andromedon, uh, when we were making that character, you know, like it, it, it does, it, it shares uh, dive suits with the the big daddy. That's great. You know, they both <laughs> kind of come from that same language to a degree, but but we mixed ours with with spacesuits, and you know, his color key comes from one of the earliest NASA spacesuits, and then uh, you know, I. I've always been fascinated by the the bendy uh, coily arms that like you know from from 50 sci-fi movies. Rob the robot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and like could I could I actually do that and not make it silly, right? And so, <laughs> um, so that was like the little challenge with with him. Uh, you know, the Archon. You know, we really wanted him to 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 be godlike. You know, it was deliberate. Um, that was a very deliberate choice. We wanted him to. Uh, be be graceful, but but have you know this devastating rage um, uh, that had evolved from like floaters. Um, so so yeah, we kind of went in a lot of those directions. Uh, again, we always try to ground it in a in a place where the, there's an entry point uh, for the player, uh, whether it's the previous game or sci-fi lore. Um, but yeah, we always want that 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 connection with familiarity, but with a twist of fantastic. Um, yeah, that's kind of how we approach everything from our direction. That's great. I, I love your faceless design. That's one one of my favorite monsters in the game. And I don't know if it's my favorite just because, like, I, I or I don't know if I was terrified of them just because I hated running into them or if it was just their goopy <laughs> nature, but one of my favorites. I'm the, fond of the Andromedans. Mm -hmm. well, the when they crawl through the window, it's terrifying. Like, when you see them actually crawl through a window, it is, it is like one of the boogeyman. Man. I mean, it, it is, because he kind of, like, switches down and kind of rolls through. Um, it is by far probably the creepiest animation in the game for it me. It is. It's great. Great job. I don't know. There's something. There's something creepy about a, a robot with a dead alien hanging out of it, chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty creepy too. Yeah. I think. There's... I think that's my favorite alien in the game. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. He. He. He's. I, I. You know. It's hard for me to pick a favorite. I mean. I think. I, I think the Muton is still my my favorite just from an overall uh, design. But um, mm. I have some attachment to him. But. Uh, but yeah, they're they're all very very different, and 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 we really try to push everything really apart, not only on the visual spectrum, like everything's got its own color key, and uh, and you know, we kind of try to get as much diversity as we can in the visual, but but on top of it, um, you know, that's also the same approach for design. Like we really try to push their their abilities apart from each other, mm -hmm. um, you know, not only in the aliens but also in the soldiers. We really try to get a spectrum. Um, of, of different experiences for the player, uh, both visually and from a design perspective. The silhouette rule, right? You know you have a good character if you can tell what it is by its silhouette. Yep. And and every yep. every enemy has its own unique little silhouette, and so you know exactly how fucked you are right from the beginning. <laughs> which, which, is, is which is very. Which... <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually started with a silhouette sheet. Like That was like one of the very first things we did once we got a handle on what we were doing. We actually made a... a uh, a lineup that had a scale and also a color key. 
Oh. Um, so that was one of the very first things we did as we got the descriptions of what the aliens could do. We started uh, just kind of thumbnailing and then putting them in a lineup. So yeah, oh, it neat. showed you the spectrum yep. of height and color, and then that 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 informed a lot of like, well, what can this thing do? And I think the art overall really reflects play forever as well. Like even it pushes into the the, the environments, and they change the, the the rendering pipeline to allow for dynamic lighting and you don't know what time of day you're going to get and what weather and in enemy unknown all that was baked into the maps so um the artists changed a lot of how they made content as well to um sort of uh give a new soul into the game so it feels different every every time you play yeah, and procedural would have been next to impossible with the previous pipeline yeah uh the, the tech change really allowed that uh so uh you you two obviously you, you you work in the games industry. You're incredibly busy at the moment. But uh, something that I just want to know is what are you playing outside of XCOM 2? Because you should be playing XCOM 2. <laughs> but uh, outside of XCOM 2, what are you guys playing right now? I was oh. I was just at at lunch with some some of the other uh, producers at Firaxis, and no lie, like everyone's talking about what other games they're playing. <laughs> and yeah, I'm still playing XCOM 2 Legends. <laughs> um, but 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 I am I am. Um, I am also playing Darkest Dungeon, uh, which uh, they, they were all joking with me, saying, I, I guess I like punishing myself right now. <laughs> because between XCOM 2 and Darkest Dungeon, um, I'm, I'm surprised I'm not walking into, into work with bruises and black eyes all over myself. <laughs> Those are punishing games, but Darkest Dungeon's pretty awesome. It, it's got it's got some pretty neat uh, mechanics um, based on you know the stress of your characters going going deeper into these these frantic, dark, uh, scary dungeons and 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 then they can get sort of random attributes and and behave differently mechanically based on what happens to them in, in this stress stressful system. So it's pretty neat. What about you? Uh, I'm moving, so <laughs> uh, my personal time outside the office a little when I'm not playing XCOM or, or looking at XCOM is a little limited. But I've got uh, on my short list of stuff that I'm going to play as soon as I get done moving. Um, I want to play. Uh, I'm catching up on stuff that I didn't get to play during during EU, uh, X2. Uh, so I'm looking at, uh, I, I want to play uh, Invisible Ink is on my list. Um, uh, Firewatch is something I want to, I'm yeah. interested in, in checking out. Uh, cool. um, uh, Flame in the Flood. Like that's, yeah. You know, like there, there, there's there's some stuff that's come out recently that I have not had a chance to get to, but that is the, the stuff that I'm going to play as soon as I get some free time. All the pretentious time. games that no one knows what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, Those yeah, three yeah. are the full spectrum. About, uh, Witcher 3, I want to play Witcher 3. <laughs> Nothing wrong with pretentious games. I love, I love me some know, invisible we ink. Games. <laughs> we, it's so funny because, like, you know, last, you know, at the end of the project, like, you're not, you're not playing anything for your own game, or like, you probably shouldn't yeah. be. And so, like, you, you get this stack of Steam games that you buy that you just haven't had a chance to get into. Um, so that's like kind of sitting there taunting me. So yeah. as soon as, uh, as soon as we're, we're, uh, as soon as I get things straightened out for myself, that's that's where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be playing some of those. That sounds like a great a great and broad selection of games. <laughs> yeah. Turn-based strategy, uh, story focused, atmospheric, yeah. and <laughs> hey, yeah, we you know we, we kind of like everything. them all. We don't yeah. you know we, we we check out everything that's got little. I mean, for me, each one of those things has something that I'm um, interested in, uh, either mechanics or, or visually that I wanna that I wanna check out. So I, that's kind of kind of how I pick my my games that I play. Sure. Well, that sounds great. I, I think. Yeah, no, I think. I that, think that's thank all you, the questions. Thank you very much for for taking some time out of your day to uh, to hang out with us. Make a cow pattern now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's gonna it's gonna happen. Cow pattern. The cow and we uh, we actually have no good way to end the show, so it's probably just gonna be clumsy and. Uh, <laughs> It's probably just going to be this. This is how we're going to end the show. That's how we end all of our things. So. They just uh, suddenly. <laughs> yes. But we we'll just awkwardly sit in silence with you. Okay, let's do that for for uh, ten seconds. It's total silence, <laughs> but but be on the phone with us. <laughs> no laughing. It's quiet. It's no, quiet. No, it's quiet. Everyone must be quiet. <laughs> <laughs>